And speaking of China, there was one photo today that showed just how sick that dictatorship, the, the dictatorship is and how stupidly it lies. This is the photo. It's taken from a discussion on CNN about Peng, Peng Shui, the tennis champion that China denies it's keeping captive. Look at that test pattern on the right of the screen. And I'll come back to that because it exposes China's lie. Uh, like I said last night, Peng Shui is a Chinese player who won the doubles title at Wimbledon and the Paris Open, but went missing in China for two weeks after she accused one of China's top politicians, a former vice premier, of raping her, posting her allegations on Weibo, China's version of Twitter. Now that post was quickly deleted, and so were all posts in China about Peng Shui. But top tennis players like Novak Djokovic spoke out and the Women's Tennis Association said if China did not prove Peng was safe, it would be banned from hosting tournaments. So China tried various stunts to convince the world Peng wasn't really under detention. For instance, it released a video of her at a restaurant where the people around her just happened very helpfully, as you do, to mention the date. The date that day. It was last Saturday. So that the world would know it was filmed now. How natural is that? But if Peng is so free in China, simply resting at home, like an email purportedly from her said, out and about with friends, all that kind of thing, why does China not want its own citizens to know this reassuring news? I want to explain to our viewers what's happening on our screen right now, because underneath your face, they can see a box, which is the actual live feed of this broadcast in China, but it's all color bars. And it went to color bars the minute you started talking. So what's going on here? Chinese censors, John, uh, I have lost count over the last eight years here in Asia covering China of how many times CNN's coverage of controversial issues has been censored. They scrub Peng Shui from the Internet. Uh, they're certainly not talking about this on television and even international networks. They have an army of censors waiting to push that button the minute that we start talking about this story. The fraud exposed. But in all this concern about one female tennis champion, let us never forget that Peng Shui is just one of millions of people detained in China. Muslim Uyghurs, Falun Gong, Catholic leaders, human rights activists, Hong Kong politicians and journalists like Jimmy Lai, who I had on the show twice before he was jailed. Let us not also forget China holds two Australians in jail on fake charges of spying. Journalist Chang Lei, who criticised China's handling of the pandemic, and writer and democracy advocate Yang Hengjun, locked up now for two years. And now dictator Xi Jinping is locking up some of his own senior officials like Meng Hongwei, his former vice minister of public security. His wife has not heard of him now for two years and she lives in hiding in France. She spoke out this week against this dictatorship. For today's China, in my eyes, I think they are the monster now. First, China. Now, I hear people, even a Morrison government minister who was too gutless to identify himself, bag former Prime Minister Tony Abbott for last week going to Taiwan and warning it to prepare for war, warning us too, because China wants to take over Taiwan and is now aggressive enough to do it. But oh, the criticism of Tony Abbott, you know, he was just provoking China, don't poke that bear, and he was making it hard for our poor government. Well, no, Tony Abbott was warning of what will happen if we, the wider West, do not make it crystal clear that China won't get away with an invasion of Taiwan. That we won't let it. And you see how dangerous and threatening China is from its hysterical reaction to Abbott's speech. The abuse. This dictatorship, its foreign affairs ministry, its embassy here, it's called Abbott a failed and pitiful politician, said he gave a despicable and insane performance in Taiwan that showed his hideous anti-China features. And he was immoral and ridiculous. 
Now that's the kind of uh, completely over the top abuse that you would get from a gangster regime. The kind of dictatorship that does go to war, like Hitler's Nazis, Mussolini. And so the people now say, well, look, you know, Abbott should sh just shut up, stop making us a target, you know. I say this, shutting up is exactly what this genocidal dictatorship wants us to do. It wants us to kowtow. And don't pretend it's just Tony Abbott or, or Australia, the Morrison government that's got China angry and threatening reprisals. I mean, you just look at China's official Global Times newspaper. Well, today, yes, it did indeed dare us to stand up to China. It dared Australia to deploy most of its warships around the Chinese mainland and give young Australian soldiers a worthy death defending democracy. I mean, how childish is that kind of I dare you kind of talk? But this communist regime newspaper sponsored by the Chinese Communist Party also warned India that China would not give up claims to territory on their border. And if India misjudged this, if it started a war, it would definitely lose. Again, this war talk. The Global Times has also threatened war today against Taiwan. Now, this is not the behaviour of a stable, mature government. If you want someone insane, look at the editor-in-chief of that newspaper. In fact, I might ask him if he'll come on this show. Let's see if he's got the guts. Now, the threat from China is very real. And all Tony Abbott did was tell us exactly that. Get ready. Well, bad news. War may be closer than you think or closer than Australia is prepared for. On Friday and Saturday, China sent 77 warplanes into Taiwan's air defence zone, the most ever in its near daily buzzing of Taiwan. It sent 38 warplanes on Friday, including nuclear-capable bombers, and 39 the next day, flying to the south of the island, this island democracy with 24 million people that China says must come under Chinese control. Now, the Chinese dictator has told his military to prepare for war, and China's official Global Times newspaper today was absolutely chilling. It said China's military, the PLA, had carried out wide-ranged operations near Taiwan to familiarise itself with battlefield conditions. And once the order to attack is given, the pilots will fight as experienced veterans. The PLA is forming a siege of Taiwan. Now, you could not get a more explicit warning that China is preparing to invade Taiwan if it thinks it can get away with it with Dozy Joe Biden in the White House. And if it does invade, the US and us, we're going to either help defend Taiwan, go to war, or accept that China, this dictatorship, is now the master of our part of the world and our freedoms are diminished. But it's only now that China, Australia is frantically trying to get ready to defend itself. And that is why two weeks ago, the Prime Minister, the Defence Minister, the Foreign Affairs Minister, top intelligence chiefs were all in Washington at the same time for talks with the US, Britain, Japan and India. And not just to get us nuclear subs, but to get more military technology here very fast. Maybe even get the US and Britain to park some submarines here urgently. So I can't stress enough how serious this threat is. We have just been given a frightening reminder that China is not just a dictatorship. It's actually a country run by gangsters, standover men. And their reach is getting longer. Just last week, Britain's Foreign Office warned a British MP and also human rights activists have been criticising China, don't travel to some 50 countries that have extradition treaties with this dictatorship. China could ask those countries to arrest that MP or those activists and send them to China. It's extraordinary. And if you think China would not do that, well, last week showed it's capable of anything and doesn't even bother to hide it. Three years ago, Canada arrested Meng Wanzhou. She's the rich daughter of the boss of Huawei, a tele Chinese telecommunications giant. And she was wanted by the US for alleged fraud as Huawei allegedly subverted US sanctions and selling equipment to Iran, which happens to be a fascist terrorist regime that's illegally building a nuclear bomb, we suspect. 
or China's response to this? It arrested two Canadians in China, a businessman and a former diplomat, and falsely accused them of being spies and locked them up. Now, these Canadians were held in jail while Meng Wanzhou, she did it easy under house arrest in Canada. But last week, Canada and the US finally gave in. They came up with some legal funny business, an excuse to free Meng Wanzhou without a trial, not with her present at any rate, and she returned to China to a hero's welcome, choreographed by the Chinese dictatorship. Here she is. Miss Meng Wanzhou waving her hand to the crowd. And in very beautiful red dress. And also we can see the crowd is saying, welcome back home. And Meng then that gave the crowd that had clearly been rented by the regime a prepared speech thanking China's dictator for looking after all Chinese people. General Secretary Xi is concerned about the safety of every Chinese citizen. He has also cared about me, which has moved me deeply. And then China, having won as a reward to Canada and the US, released its Canadian hostages who flew back to Canada without the flag-waving a nationalist spin.